so yeah we got we got some uh stuff to show you and some announcements to make throughout the stream today so um shall we crack on and actually show them the sort of the temperature of the color thing all right color so selecting we we're going to be running this from my computer not from mikey's mikey has horrible transparency issues and my computer's I, too I am, good for good i am opaque <laughs> Let me just put this on vibrate. All right, so uh, I've got my screen shared. So if you pop it over. Yep. And right now we're going to pick one of five randomly selected environments. This one is the toxic environment, as you can see. And I can bring up my, my torch light. Uh, it's a little bit jerky than it normally is because I'm transmitting at the same time it's playing. Um, but as you can see, it completely changes the thing. However, I'm not happy with just doing it randomly. I don't just want to do it at runtime while I'm testing it. So I can press one on my mouse to get default, or two to get frozen, and then we could let it go. And I can do the three for toxic, four for desert, and five for volcano, which Mike is not a big fan of, but I was just playing with ideas. Yeah. Uh, so why don't we go to uh, the desert for now? And you can see all the fires particles have changed. Um, any light that isn't supposed to be another color, like these lovely purple lights, have changed. These candles will change depending on what environment we're in. Not just the light, but the particle colors themselves. But the skulls don't have flame, they have highlights, um, as demonstrated. Do, 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 do. So they're not changing. Let's go back to the desert. Uh, we've also got a couple of other things. I've put these at the end of. Um, so there we go. We can go in a nice dark thing, barely lit with a horrible green light. Go here and treasure. Yeah, I'm uh, loving the fact that at the moment, um, now we've it, the global illumination system is turned on. Um, so we've got the this. Yeah, yeah. So we've got this um, lovely area that can be completely pitch black, and we've got. Uh, oh, and we've also got some traps, we which I did not right see now. until you turned your torch on. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we've just been sort of trying different ways to make this as atmospheric as possible. Um, uh, and I'll show you the system we've got in the moment, uh, in a moment, but. You can see, like, the fog is here, but when we change it to, let's say, toxic, um, it, it seems much lower to the ground. But if we go to frozen, which I believe is two, then it seems much denser. We're just changing the color. We're not actually playing with the, the fog variations. Yeah. Um, and the system we have for that is if I go to... I'll just jump in here real quick. Yes, Gerard, it is God 04. Um, it, we're this on... is God 04 Alpha 2. Yes, Alpha 3. It updated, remember? Alpha 3. Yes. Thank you. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so let's look at the template. Okay, great. So we have a brand new class, and in that, I've got the fog color, which is the standard low-lying fog. I've got it to about half a meter, I think, or a meter from the ground. I've got the volumetric fog, which is everywhere, but you'll only see it far away. Um, and it'll also cause, like, haze around lights and so on. Uh, depending on the colors you choose for this, they'll be more or less visible, obviously. We've got the actual firelight color, and then we've got a, a ramp and a name. Uh, so if we open whatever one this is, this is the desert colors. I've got the, the colors I've picked here from palette. And then I've made a little color ramp. And it's very easy to make new ones. Now, at the moment, um, I can't do a typed array for resources. I can do a typed array, but I can't say these are all resources. Um, it just doesn't like it. So what I'm doing is I'm hard coding them in, which is not ideal, but, you know, alpha. So here they are. So if I want to make a new one, uh, should we make a new one? Let's make a new one. If I want to make yes. a new one, I'm just going to inherit from here. Boop. Yes, Louis. And... Um, Bob is now floating higher. Uh, Jan's brought him up to head height. I have. He was, I was tripping up on him. So Bob is, is flying up. Uh, let's not call this bad. We'll call this uh, 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 live stream. Okay. Live stream. <laughs> okay, so decided we're doing a forest, so that's what we Oh no, wait, I need to Is this your first time using Godo again? There we go. Gotta go from here, then call it forest. I teach this for a living, you know. There we go. Uh now I can save it in the environments. Great. Um and then we just pick our colours. So our fog colour, it's gonna be a forest. Let's do a nice sort of dark brown, because it'll be quite hard to see. A nice dark brown. <laughs> It's a nice dark brown. <laughs> However, I'm going to pick this pretty yellow light. My firelight is going to be a warm orange. 
Nice. And now let's pick our actual flame colors. So there's a new gradient, and I'm going to start from here. I'm going to end here. And now let's pick some actual fire colors. Nice. I didn't know you could have so many divisions in a gradient in, in Goddard. You le I've learned something new today, folks. Okay, so now we're going to put that in. So let's go to our, uh, our dungeon environment maker. Where is this one? No, dungeon environment script. Here we go. And I'm just going to go pick here and find the new one we just made, which is forest, and drop it in. <gasps> Two things. Now. You can click and drag from there. That is awesome. Always good. Now, because I'm hard coding this at the moment, um, I need to copy this because otherwise I'm not going to be able to do it manually. This is not ideal. Hot code. La 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 la. Don't at me. I'm looking at you. Um, let's go to our project settings and just bind the key six. The nice thing about having an MMO mouse is I can type numbers without having to use the keyboard. <laughs> All right, let's see what our forest looks like. It's probably going to be a bit rubbish because I haven't tested this. I just picked some colors. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay, forest. I didn't name it. Let's name it. Mm -mm -mm. Once more with feeling. Wheelie, wheelie, woo. Oop. There we go. And let's go to the forest. And here's our forest. Now, this doesn't look very foresty right now. I should probably have picked green fog or something. Uh, so let's do that real quick. I love how you can very quickly uh, just hop in, change this parameters This is the benefit of doing now. them as a class, right? Because I've defined what this class is, and you can see the new keyword here, ex export color no alpha. So it knows it must be a, a color. Um, and we're not going to use an alpha. I, I can specify an alpha, but I don't want one, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, let's do a much darker green than the body metrics. And let's make you much brighter. So yeah, because it's all modular and they're fixed, they're working from a template, it's very quick and easy to make one. Um, if I, we just more, there we go. So does this look like a forest? It looks significantly different from the previous one. It's a much it's lighter environment now. Yeah, we've got this yellow green light everywhere. I don't know if this is a forest. It looks a bit concrete, but you see the, the way we're doing it, right? Um, with the color palette we've got and so on. Now, the way I would use this is I would suggest um, bringing in specific enemy types, maybe specific decorations, maybe even specific room types, depending on which uh, dungeon environment you pick. Because if I'm going through a toxic swamp, or I'm going through a frozen dungeon, or I'm going through this horrible purple volcano thing, I expect to find something different. It shouldn't just be the lighting. But this is an easy way that we could just say, okay, here's your resource, go on in. And if we look at the script real quick, for uh, these whilst you're Whilst you're going through there, so Governor, um, how many FPS do you have? Is it so, it's some kind of laggy? Uh, so we've got a couple of issues when it comes to that, and they're all streaming related and not um, game related. So Jan's system runs at sixty frames per second locked, which is like yeah. a screen. Uh, but when we when we ask his poor system to not only stream it and connect to the internet and do loads of other things, my graphics card runs at sixty, but I can hear the fans whirring, like it's pushing it. Like yes. this, isn't, this machine is is getting on a bit. However, doing that and streaming at the same time, my machine's like, I mean, I guess I could do that, but I'm going to be taking breaks. Um, like actual, every 60 millisecond breaks. But The actual script for updating the environment, we're just going to get an integer in, and then we're going to say, okay, uh, the, your new dungeon environment is whichever one of these the int is, instantiate, which is the new keyword for instance, which keeps throwing me, um, Get your new fog color, get your new volumetric fog albedo, everything that's in the group torches, which isn't just torches, it's also candles, the chasm fire, and the firewall at the beginning. Update your new fire gradient, which is a method they all have, with the new fire light color. Finally, we're going to set the text. So when we go in, and we find a room to explore, let me bring up the thing, there we go. 
So here we are in default, as you can see from the bottom right, which you might actually be able to read. Um, jump over some traps, bring in some torch light. Torch light. Might be a the bit torchlight, smaller on the way, mobile. You'll see now is um, it, it tweens in and out. So it, it just it's not just a flashlight. I've, I've put a little particle, but lots of trap spikes, which Bob should actually walk through. Bob, are you coming? Bob? <laughs> What's Bob, Bob? been caught on? <laughs> There he is. What, are you just reading? <laughs> he might. Uh, so yeah, I've just, I mean, like 10 minutes ago, moved it so the navigation mesh isn't registering these trap things, although apparently it is. What are you stuck on? Um, so it should mean that you can bring NPCs. Are you coming? Oh, what's wrong with Bob? There's some sort of bug. I'll have to fix it later. You should be able to bring NPCs through traps. But let's go find a room and see how these environments make it feel different. Um, I would also want to do this with different uh, soundscapes and sound tracks. Uh, but here we are in a shop, and his default is frozen. Toxic. I'm slipping <laughs> under. <laughs> Dessert. Mm. Oh my goodness, it's red. And this horrible concrete bunker we just made. Um, yes, when I gave this to Mikey, the first thing he did was go. Um, so I, I've got to jump in at this point and just say um, I was a lot better, so much better, and I, I, I did don't it think for. That's a, true. I, I did it for a solid fifteen minutes. <laughs> yes, he did. I was sitting there drinking my coffee, just waiting for it to get out of the system, but no. This is why uh, Yan's showing it to you and not me. <laughs> yep. Uh, you will notice some of the lights don't update immediately, so this candle has this weird pool of light, which will at some point suddenly kick in. Um, but as you can see, the library just feels very different with all of these different mm. environments we've just made. Definitely. New one, which does actually work. Like It feels like a wizard's tower. but So yeah, I, I can see a situation where either you let the player pick which theme they're going to go in or as you go further down the dungeon we're going to go into different areas with different things or we pick one randomly like this there's, there's a lot of ways you could play with this it could also give so, you yeah, some sort of affordance as to what uh what is about to happen what enemies you're about to face etc exactly i don't know what the deal with bob is um and if i jump on this stool it should freak out the table certainly will <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's basically where, what we've been doing. We've been playing with these different looks. Mikey only saw this the first time yesterday. Um, but yeah, that's that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And I'm going to push this button. I'm actually not st stopping sharing my screen. It's streaming to Mikey. I'm just letting him know I'm done. See? Still there. Yeah. <laughs> so much easier now. I can just push one button. Oh, I need to reload that. Okay. I can even go just full me as well, which is awesome. <laughs> well, uh, mm, some would say, I've heard. Uh, yes, I am indeed hoarding the FPS. Like the toilet the, roll. At the beginning of a pandemic. Yes. <laughs>